Hello, and thank you for tuning into Stacker Chats. Stacks is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts. I'm Gina Abrams, and I'm joined by Muni Bali, Stacks founder. So this is our first Stacker Chat of the year. You know, we last spoke about SBTC, which really unlocks the trustless movement of Bitcoin in and out of Bitcoin layers. In a recent discussion with Checkmatey on Twitter, we can link it in the notes, um, he compared the SBTC model to an expansion and more decentralized development and take on federated models. And what are your thoughts on this characterization? And what to you indicates that this implementation and this timing are the right ingredients for Bitcoin layers to succeed? Yeah, I think I think in a way, like I like the mental model. Um, because it, it helps cl clarify a bunch of things. So let's let's say that you take a uh, federation design, let's say liquid, um, as as a base case. So in liquid, what happens is that there is a predetermined set of entities uh, who are the signers. And when you are uh, sort of like pegging in your Bitcoin, you're absolutely trusting those entities that when you ask for the Bitcoin back, uh, they will sign and they will give it back to you. Right. So let, let's call that the, the base level of security that we currently see in, in, in Bitcoin layers, because RSK is also sort of similar. I mean, they do some stuff with hardware, but it's a preset federation of signers that you're sort of like trusting that they, they would they would sign if you ask for the money back. Um, and, and the model that we are introducing, I think there are two sort of like dimensions for it. Uh, the first one is the, the group of people is dynamic and open, meaning that anyone could participate to be a signer. So it's not a predetermined federation. Um, so you could be anywhere anywhere on the planet, really, uh, and you could become a signer on the network, which is great. It's, it's like Bitcoin, like anyone can become a miner. Open systems are great. And that also means that it's dynamic, uh, meaning that you're not relying on a particular company or something. People can come and go. Uh, it might be that in certain jurisdiction, you know, for for various reasons, you can no longer be a signer. Doesn't mean that the system stops because other people in other jurisdictions can come in and become signers and the system like sort of uh, like moves on. That, so that's one part of it, which is great. It was clearly an improvement uh, from a federation design uh, because who wouldn't want like open systems, who wouldn't want like, you know, dynamic systems that can, uh, th this is why decentralization matters. Right? So that's why we call it a decentralized peg. And the, and the second uh, aspect, is economic incentives. In a federation model, the federation members are not putting up any money. Like there's nothing, they, they only have reputational risk. They're not putting up any collateral that basically says that if I refuse to sign and decide to kind of like keep your Bitcoin, um, I would be penalized uh, with this much amount of capital. And over here, and, and by the way, those federation members are also not earning anything. I think I think there, there are, it's, it's Depends on the federation. There might be some fees on the network, if but that's for mining operations, that not for signing operations. Right? There's a difference. Uh, and in in this model, the signers are actually required to lock up capital. That is the STX capital that they lock in. So they have an economic stake. Uh, they have more capital locked than they potentially gain to lose by by refusing to sign. Plus, they're earning BTC directly, earning BTC rewards. Uh, for performing the work of being a signer. So if they don't do the work, they don't get the rewards. That's it. That is in addition to the STX capital that they've already locked. So we introduced these economic incentives in there. And, and you could argue that, you know, large um, parties like, uh, you know, custody providers like Coinbase Custody or others, they would sign because they have reputational risk anyway, right? If they are a signer on the network. So that's again, the base case, the base case of doing the right thing because you have reputational risk uh, remains in, in this SBDC system as well. But on top of that, there's capital locked. And on top of that, there are the BTC rewards uh, that people are getting for, for doing the right thing. So this is how I would think about it. There's a base a federation system gives you certain certain uh, properties, and and this is an improvement in in decentralization, in openness, in economic incentives uh, on 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 top of that model. And I think one one final point about that is that thinking in these terms also make it very clear that why do you need an, a separate asset in the Bitcoin pair? Because it's actually a trade off. You can decide 
that I don't want the STX asset, then you end up with a federation. Then it's no longer the open permissionless system where anyone can come in and become a signer. Then you don't have the economic incentives anymore. There is no capital uh, there by definition to lock, right? So it's a trade-off. Like, and it because it actually that comparison makes it very clear if you're looking at Bitcoin layers that okay, Stacks is a Bitcoin layer, Liquid is a Bitcoin layer. One has a has a separate token, one doesn't. What's the difference? The difference is a federation versus an open system with economic incentives. And then users get to pick, the free markets get to pick which system they want to use. And I think that's overall very, very healthy uh, for Bitcoin to have all these different layers and different options available to people. 